Okay, I am a crazy sweet tooth. I think you guys already know that about me. I love talking about dessert to anybody. Um, I love eating it. I moved to France. I ate too much of it. And I just, I, it's one of my absolute weaknesses. Now, John and I love food, and we thought it'd be great to invite you into our kitchen and share with you our absolute passion about food. We love making food. We love eating it. We love trying new things. We are foodies. We are crazy people over food. I will literally sit down and read a cookbook, just like a novel. And I know that that is probably so weird to some of you, but it makes me really excited. I will wander around grocery stores because, because I love looking at the packaging and you know, just everything about it just makes me crazy squirrely. So anyway, um, back to the dessert. I could eat dessert all day long. Thank goodness I go to the studio and work. Otherwise, it's just, it's troubling to just everything about it's troubling. So I'm gonna make a trifle with you. And the reason I'm gonna share a trifle with you is because it's one of my favorite, favorite things. The kids love it. I love it. The problem with trifle is it's in the refrigerator and then I'm walking around with my spoon on the weekends and my slipper, my slippers and my cup of tea and I'm dipping my spoon into the trifle every, I don't know how often, I don't even want to share with you how often, but it's so easy to make. So I'm just going to get into it with you and the coolest thing about trifle is that um, you can kind of turn it into your own thing and that's the way John and I cook. We usually cook and bake things that can become our own. You know what, four little kids, we're at the studio all day, we're getting home, we don't have time for this big production of a meal. We just have to get home, sit the kids down to do homework, open up the refrigerator. What is in the refrigerator that we can actually cook tonight? I know that's how you are most of the time. It's hard to have this big plan every single day, every single week, is the fridge perfectly packed. So if we need a quickie dessert, or if I wanna dance around in the kitchen a little bit on the weekends, this is the thing. So. So simple. The first thing about trifle, I will tell you, is that um, homemade pudding makes it oh, so much better. You can use instant pudding. It, absolutely, man. I am all for shortcuts. Do that. That's no problem. It's cornstarch and sugar and um, a pinch of salt. And um, you're not going to ruin this. Honestly, this is not something you can ruin. Um, OK, this is something you're going to learn about me. Uh, when I do eat dessert, it has to be real. No skim milk. God, to make trifle with skim milk, that's just, that's a crime. That is just a crime. So I'm all about half and half or whole milk. So do your own thing again, but um, it's about three cups of milk. And um, I will put it on the stove top and just get it, um, get it going. Now, there's nothing about this really that's time consuming except for this you know, one little part, whisk, whisk the um, milk and in your ingredients and, um, you know, keep it moving around. Otherwise, um, just it's not very pretty after a while. So I'm going to warm this up. And um, when I, in the meantime, get that going, I'm going to crack my eggs, three eggs. <clears throat> Usually one of the kids is here cracking the eggs for me because they love making trifle as much as I do. Finn especially, he's my, he's my project guy. He's so into projects on the weekends. And when he gets home from school tonight and sees that there's a new trifle in the refrigerator because we are the two that ate the last one, trouble. So trifle is also marvelous. Okay, so this is just heating up. I kind of have it on like medium, high, and um, Stir up the eggs a little bit. And when I, um, just before I put the eggs in with the milk, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the milk into the eggs just to warm them ever so slightly. So that when I do finally throw them in, they won't curdle. Have you ever had that happen? That's the most hideous thing when that happens and it just makes me mental. Um, and if it does happen to you, if because I will tell you, everything that can go wrong in the kitchen has gone wrong with me, um, as it does with most of us. If you like to cook regularly, you've had every, everything that can go wrong happen to you. So if that does happen to you, um, and you have a Cuisinart, throw your whole batch into the Cuisinart, 
and give it a whirl and it will come out and be very smooth. Because uh, believe me, there are plenty of times that I put something on the stove and then I walk away and I realize, ah, you know, it's, I've done it again. So this should be, yeah, it's starting to get warmed up now. So basically, I will just take, pour a little of this. It's sort of like you're tempering your eggs a little bit and it kind of warms them up. And always start with room temperature ingredients if you can. I realize that's asking a lot. I get that that's not the reality all the time. And believe me, most of the time I'm not able to either. But um, in a perfect world, if you can start with room temperature ingredients, there's a lovely thing about that. So right now I just have my half and half with a little bit of whole milk and the sugar and the cornstarch and a bit of salt. And I will just keep stirring it until it, I'm going to turn up the heat a little bit, um, until it comes to a nice boil. Once it comes to a boil, then um, I'll just watch it for maybe like another minute, just kind of see if it's getting a little bit thicker. You can tell by dipping your wooden spoon. If you're not used to making this kind of stuff like puddingy sort of things, you can always tell by dipping a wooden spoon into it. That's always my best test. Um, you know, it's harder to tell with a whisk. Uh, but I'm make so much puddingy stuff that I, <laughs> that I can tell now because it's one of the number one things I like to make. I think it's our chilly Wisconsin weather that makes me want to make puddings and stuff like that all the time. Plus, I'm sorry, what, who does not want to eat a recipe that has cake and pudding and whipped cream and fruit? The English got this one right, man, and so I'm all over it. It's for sure one of my favorite desserts. I love it in the summer, too, because all those luscious, fresh berries are perfect in this. And um, now mind you, I buy berries in the winter too, even though I know a lot of people, whoo, I'm spilling it all over. Even though a lot of people, um, you know, are all about buying things in season. But in Wisconsin, that doesn't give you much in the winter at all. <laughs> so I'm just going to show you what this is starting to look like. You can see it's starting to thicken a little bit and it's going to get even thicker. It's not, okay, it's just starting to boil around the edges. So I'm stirring it pretty quickly, and if I start to see anything funny happening, like any little lumps or anything, what I'll typically do is I will turn the heat down a little bit. It'll still boil. It's getting nice and thick now. I'm almost there. So you can see, this is a pretty quick process. And like I said, you can use instant pudding, but I, I swear this is nearly as fast and so incredibly delicious. So that is just about there. In fact, right now, oh, you know, you get a little sweaty in the kitchen too. I'm gonna have to lose this sweater in about five minutes. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep mixing it. I'll usually take it off the heat at this point. I'll keep mixing it. So I hope you can see how it's getting nice and see the consistency is kind of it's quite lovely. At this point, I could just take this whole pan and a glass of wine and go hide away in my bedroom <laughs> with a big spoon and I will be set for the rest of the day. And I'm not kidding you, I could eat this pan of pudding. It's right up my alley. All right, perfection. It's at a really good thick point. So. If I want to make this when I get home from work, which, you know what, I don't always make dessert for the kids every night. You know, they want dessert every night, of course, but it's not a reality to make it every night. So if they do, it's usually like ice cream sundae or something like that. But um, if we're feeling fancy, even though trifle's not a fancy thing, um, we'll make something like this. And if I need to make it in a jiffy, then I will make a cold bath for it. To, because otherwise, you know, really what I do generally with this is I will pour it into a pan. Let me get my bowl. And um, this is a very good tricky trick. Okay, so this is my Dutch oven. If you don't have one of these, it doesn't matter at all. I've had this since, God, this needs cleaning. I've had this forever and since John and I were married. And so all I've done is I've taken my Dutch oven um, I have a bowl in it and then I have ice in it. Can you see? And basically I've just created a cold bath. That's all this is. And what will happen, of course, is you have to cool your pudding. <clears throat> um, 
you have to cool your pudding before you make this whole thing because naturally there's whipped cream and all that other lusciousness in this dessert. So what will happen? Okay, see, ooh, it's so good. I'm gonna have a little taste just to, and see how it coats the spoon perfectly. Mm, it's so good. And, mm, you know what I didn't tell you? Okay, of course you have to add vanilla into it. And I almost am out of vanilla entirely. But it's a couple of tablespoons. I just kind of do that. And then naturally, being the Wisconsin girl I am, I have to add butter. I always add butter when I'm pudding. I know you might be cringing, but oh, it makes it so perfect. Don't put your butter or your vanilla in until the very end. It makes it more creamy. You know, there are, this is a very old fashioned kind of a thing to make. And um, when you add a little bit of butter and some vanilla into it, it just makes it that much more perfect. So, okay, the pudding is essentially done. Now that it has the butter. Mm. Yum! So then I just put the top on. Um, then I will uh, set this aside. This is going to cool really quickly now that it's in its fabulous cooling bath. It'd probably be happier in a hot bath. So I'll set it aside. Now the rest of this just gets easier and easier. All right. <clears throat> Oop. So then I use a pre-made um, pound cake. You know, whatever version you can find at your grocery store, you usually find them um, frozen. And I cut it into pieces, you know, about like that. So the great thing about um, pound cake is that it's got lots of soakability. So you could use um, old birthday cake, you could use um, you know, whatever you might have. The great thing about trifle and how it came about in the first place is that, you know, women would have, they'd be looking for something to make some kind of yummy, luscious dessert, and they would have all this sort of stuff sitting around. You know, you've got, always got some kind of old cake or something like that. And um, even you could use kind of a sweeter bread if you wanted to. Um, <clears throat> and then by the time you get done with this whole thing, it all melds together and everything. What will make this even more lustrous is I will take um, where oh, I will take apricot preserves, okay. And again, you can just kind of eyeball this. I usually use, you know, about well, almost a whole jar. You know, you can see. And then what I will put in with it is um, I'm out of Cointreau right now, but I love Cointreau in it. So I just grab Grand Marnier, and uh, if you don't have that, grab. Whatever you do have, you could use a really good port. You could use um, mm, a little of that in the morning is nice too. <laughs> you could use, um, you know, whatever you might have that uh, makes you crazy. So then all I do with this, I put it over the stovetop, not for very long. All I'm trying to do is combine the two and I want the preserves to loosen up a little bit uh, and get a little bit more liquidy. So I'll just whisk it around. I'm not looking for this to boil or anything at all like that. In fact, I think it needs a little bit more. Um, some people don't even use preserves. I do because I think it, it is more interesting than just using um, you know, Grand Marnier or using Cointreau or something like that. I just think it's, you know, some people use Amaretto. You'll see that. I, really, you could use whatever you want. Like I said, a port is even good. So you can see this is getting all nice and liquidy. Mmm. Yummy. Beautiful. And that's pretty much done. So, the, so basically, that's as complicated as this piece gets. Now, I happen to have a trifle dish, but if you don't, it's really not a big deal at all. Just use like a glass bowl. It's nice to use a clear glass bowl because, of course, the wonderful thing about trifle is that it's layered, and that's what's so cool about it. So you get this pretty little, you know, side shot of it, and that's what I love about it. So what I first do is um, throw a little of the sauce in the bottom, and... Then I essentially take my lovely little cakes here and I, I do this just to soak up some of the goods. Now, this is, this is not about perfect. 
you simply will not get perfect out of me. No matter how much you may want it or try, <laughs> you are not going to get it. <laughs> this is fast. It's imperfect. The kids love doing this part. Um, and I just kind of shove them in the bottom. It, who cares? You know, it's just... And then, of course, you have to lick your fingers as you're going because Grand Marnier and apricot preserves are so wonderful. Why let that go to waste? So, after I do that, I will layer on... Let me just see if my pudding is ready. Nearly. It's still the tiniest bit warm. The, the problem with that, as I said, is if I lay it on right now and then I do whipped cream and everything, it will melt the whipped cream. So it just needs a second. Let me feel it. Actually, it's not too bad. I think it'll actually be fine. Okay. So then, got my lovely pudding. It, as long as it's kind of room temperature, you're set. You don't have to worry past that. Okay. So you've got this. <clears throat> I also have... Instantly. Um, I have whipped cream. I do my own whipped cream. Whatever. Do what you want. Cool whip, whatever your thing is. Um, I prefer whipping it. It takes two seconds. I add sugar to it. I add um, vanilla to it, and it's perfection to me. And then, so you can see my little batch of ingredients, and then I have berries. Anything you want. Peaches are spectacular, especially when they're all dripping and juicy and wonderful. Um, Blueberries are great. Like last weekend, I actually made a trifle. You can see how much I make this. And all that was available were blueberries. That's great. And today, the grocery store had strawberries, which is wonderful. So I'm using those too. So this is all you do from here, kids. Layer this on. Make sure you get some bites in between. <laughs> okay. Put some berries on. Now, here's the thing I like to do with the berries. I always try to force them to the edges. So tricky, isn't it? But then, if you do that, when you're looking at the trifle and you're seeing the pretty layering effect, how about that that's actually a word that I use even when I cook, layering. So you hear it from me in fashion, and you hear it from me in decorating, and then you hear it from me in cooking, layering. And then, take your whipped cream and put it in there. I mean, like a kindergartner could do this, that's how simple this is. And then some more of your luscious cake, right? And just dip it in quickly. Now, you'll, this is so good because I will then refrigerate this for you know, a little bit of time. If you're doing it on the weekend, let it refrigerate it for a few hours, and then all the flavors get all yummy and melded together, and you'll just die when you eat it. <clears throat> I'm not kidding you. It will knock you out. Um, and then, OK. I will put a little bit more pudding on top. And you know, if you mess up your sequence, it doesn't matter at all. Just get it in there and, you know, make it, make it your own. Mm, yum. OK. And then, come here, beauties. Put those in. So is it looking? Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? It's pretty on the side. You know, you're not looking for a masterpiece out of this. I really don't like making masterpiece desserts. I feel like I always mess them up. They just get, ugh, you know, not, and they're not as much fun. Okay, some more whipped cream. You get where I'm going. You could keep layering this thing to infinity. Some trifle dishes are even bigger, but that's it, you know, that's, isn't it? Beautiful and yummy. Okay, so then I'm just going to show you one more thing. So typically, I'd put it in the fridge at this point and let it sit for a while. But <clears throat> since it's you and I want to share with you, I'm going to show you. It's so pretty to put it in a beautiful dish, whatever you have. You know, if you have some gorgeous glasses that you just love, maybe a pretty antique glass or whatever, use those. Or, you know, this is our glassware that... Um, We've designed, and I just, I think these are so pretty, and I love the shape of them, and I'm getting my fingerprints all over them, but they sort of mimic the trifle shape, and so then all you do when you serve trifle is, you know, don't forget you're trying to dig down deep. It's always fun to bring it to the table like this so everybody gets the big, oh, that is so cool and beautiful, and they don't realize, you know, how fast it was really to make. So then you dig down, because the whole point is you want to get 
all those yummy layers, right? And then you just scoop it up and don't worry about what it looks like once you get it in the dish. You know, just get it in there. And then, luckily this one is for me. And then you have to taste it and oh, it's so good. Mm. Email me. You are gonna love this. You're gonna make it way too often. You might hate me for it. 